Producing music is hard, plain and simple. And to be totally honest, I really wish that in the beginning I had someone tell me some of the things that could have made me so much more level-headed and also would have helped me learn so much more. So my hope is that if you're just getting started or maybe you've even been doing this for a little while already, that you can take to heart some of the things that I'm gonna talk about that I wish I would have known in the beginning. The idea of becoming a producer probably seems cool and sexy and like super epic. And while there are these like super awesome components of being a producer that are really incredible, like when you create something that gets you fired up, the truth is that being a producer is mostly not very glamorous. And when I got started, I had this idea that being a producer would almost be super flashy and like sexy. And while I obviously loved doing it, I also thought that there would be this component that was like nonstop adrenaline, almost like performing on stage. And that could not have been much further from the truth. Yeah, there are moments when producing is like this insane rush. There are those times when I'm producing when everything is flowing, the creativity is just bursting. But a lot of the times, it's actually pretty mundane work, like editing vocals or editing rhythm. It's not exactly what I would call flashy or sexy. No one would wanna watch me do that for two hours. Manipulating MIDI is not a thrill of a task. Tweaking a performance in the studio isn't something that normally gives you goosebumps unless you get it just right. And if you're new to this, you need to know that while producing has its super insane and epic moments, a lot of the details required to hit a proficient level of skill are not the most fun and entertaining things. A lot of times when I know I'm in for a long amount of editing, yeah, I have to pour myself a cup of coffee and mentally strap myself in for some really not fun work. But that work is worth it for what I'm working to accomplish. That's the very first thing, that producing music is not the sexy and flashy role that you probably think it is, but it's still awesome. I remember my very first experience with attempting to produce music. I was in middle school, and myself and some friends wanted to record some music for our band. So we borrowed a mixing board and some other gear, and when it was all said and done, we basically had no clue what we were doing. And I actually walked out because I was so frustrated and annoyed at how it was not as straightforward as I wanted to be. <laughs> he literally didn't record a single thing. And isn't that the story of so many of us when we first get started? Frustration, confusion, maybe even a pinch of anger. Producing music is not easy. Let me say that again for those of you guys in the back. Producing music's not easy. And while I learned this very fast, it took a long time for it to really sink in how hard it actually was. It probably took me five years before I was anywhere close to a professional level, five years. Producing music is not just about recording techniques or knowing how to record or plug in a MIDI or how to use software. See, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Producing music is about understanding music. And if you don't understand music from the perspective of songwriting, harmony, melody, arrangement, performance, instrumentation, sonic, sound design, ear training, mixing, and the list goes on and on, you have to know how to do so many things. It's kind of like being a general contractor of music. You have to know every part of the process down to the nub. I've taught over 500 producers in the last year, and I can tell you that one of the big things that many of them come to realize is, wow, for me to be a better producer, I have to know <laughs> kind of a lot of stuff. Like it isn't just knowing your DAW or how to record a vocal or some of those more tangible things. In fact, I think those are the easy things to learn. Those are the things where you can easily teach someone, you know, don't don't clip your audio, it's pretty easy. But the hard things to teach are what chords to use, what instruments to use, what sounds work, what sounds don't work, how to create a dynamic arrangement that keeps a listener engaged. Those are the things that are much, much harder to learn because the real answer is, it depends. There is no one answer, there is no cheat code, there is no three tips to become a pro that will actually work. There's no such thing. And gosh, I, I wish early on that I would have had someone that just told me straight up, like, Nathan, this is gonna require a lot. It's, it's hard to learn, but if you decide to do it, you won't regret it, and it's true. Producing music has changed my life. The fact that I stuck with it has gotten me to where I am today, and it's transformed my entire trajectory in life, and I'm so thankful that I didn't quit. Now, that's not to say that there are not frameworks. You can learn this. It's kind of like learning how to write a song. You can understand and learn song structure. You can understand and learn how chord progressions work. You can learn and understand how to formulate a melody. It's the same thing with, with producing. You can teach someone, here is a framework of how to structure something. Here is a framework of how to make something more dynamic. Here are principles of how we can actually do this. And I think this is the problem with a lot of the tips and tricks, and I, heck, I do tips and tricks too, and there's nothing wrong with tips and tricks, but the issue with tips and tricks from where I see it, is that tips and tricks oftentimes lack principles. And so if someone's gonna talk about, hey, here's how to do something, it is so much better to say, here's how to do it, and here are some principles 
of a framework of how you can actually apply this thing in all of these different ways. So rather than saying, do this, just because some YouTuber said, do this, like this is my EQ thing, do this EQ thing, and then just copy that. Like, no, instead it should be, here's a framework of how to think, how to listen, how to actually follow some principles that are actually going to teach you how to make good choices. And so when it comes to learning how to produce, the idea of being a musical contractor, you need to understand framework. You need to understand principles of production. And principles, in my opinion, are way more valuable than you know, just learning a bunch of hacks and learning a bunch of different cheat codes and things like that, because those things are ultimately not actually going to really compound into a way where you can understand why you're making the choices that you're making. This is something I talk about so much within my private community is why are you doing what you're doing? What is the thought process behind this? Do you, do you, are you even thinking about it in the first place? That's number two. Producing music requires how to do so much more than just one thing. Again, you have to become a general contractor of music, which is actually really cool when you stop to think about it. Like, it's so cool to think about the fact that like what we're doing as producers is actually like putting together this whole thing, taking the songs and performances and all this stuff and like collecting it into one thing that you can just like push play on and listen to and be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. That's so cool. How many times have you done all of these seemingly cool production tricks? Like you add in this crazy element and then another and another and you feel like a total magician because you're just doing all this epic stuff and then you show it to a friend and they're like, this song kind of sucks. <laughs> It, it's actually kind of hilarious because how often have I find myself producing in a way where I'm like trying to show off my prowess as this wizard of a producer and then when it's all said and done people are like meh. And what's interesting and usually true is that the response is probably not so much of a response to your production, it's usually a response to the song. As a producer, I see my job as breathing life into a song. Every choice and every decision needs to serve the song. Now. Am I saying that I do this perfectly? Of course not. There was, there's always gonna be someone who won't like the choices that I make and you. I get comments on videos when I produce music that let me know when someone doesn't like the choices I made. But ultimately, I wish I would have known at the beginning that the most important element in producing is actually the song. If the song isn't great, then the production cannot be great. They are fully contingent on each other. An incredible production may sound polished and amazing, but if the song is really subpar, then people probably won't listen. It's really that simple. Too many producers focus all of their attention on this, that, the other thing to the point to where they literally don't ask the question, is this a song that's actually ready? Is this a song that is great? Does this song have the potential? And I'm not saying don't produce a mediocre song. I'm not saying trash every song that you don't feel is a hit, but there is a direct relationship between the quality of your song and your ability to make that song what it should be as a producer. In fact, I think if you're making mediocre songs, you should produce them because that's gonna help you just get more and more expertise that when you get a truly good song, you're probably gonna know what that is. And I know some people are probably gonna drop a comment below and say that pop songs are crappy, yet they've got polished production, and yada yada, but a great song is gonna vary depending on what your goals are, right? Like, it depends on who the listener is. You gotta know your audience. But I think we all know that some songs, they do just kinda suck. And if you think that you can take any crappy song and make it a hit, I think you're misinformed. So I remember a, a while ago, I was producing an artist who brought a song to me and the song was really interesting, but the structure of the song didn't quite make sense. Like the chorus didn't feel like a chorus and some of the sections were a bit confusing as a listener to the point where I felt a little bit confused while I listened to the demo. And I had to listen multiple times to wrap my head around it, which by the way, if that's the case when you're listening to a demo, it should be an indicator that other people are probably going to also feel that way. So what did I do? Well, I suggested to the artist that we rework the song before producing. I told the artist that I didn't think the song was quite ready and it needs some structural work before it was truly ready to shine. Now, not every artist wants to hear that. Most don't. But a mature artist will hopefully recognize that if their producer is saying that, then it's out of a spirit of desiring that song to be successful. So we did that. We did just that. We reworked the song and it ended up being, in my opinion, a really great song. So as producers, we can never forget that the reason we're doing what we're doing is to elevate the song. And that is really hard. Producing is hard. And if you're feeling stuck or having a hard time, then you should watch this video right here next. See you soon.